get right into it. Let's start with uh, the final days of the week. Oh man, I don't know how you guys feel about that, you know? Because right now we have, uh, it's supposed to be tomorrow, I believe. Yeah, tomorrow around like 4 p.m. That's a specific time. So. But um, online play and all functionality for online communication. Pretty much I think, to the multiplayer for anything. Yeah, I'll, I'll be completely honest. For the most part, I saw it coming. Yeah, well, it's it's an older generation. Of course, it was going to kind of die off a little bit. Everybody has to move on to the next thing. Yeah, plus the Wii U was like a dying console anyway. So, yeah, just, it, I, I feel like it didn't get as much traction as it you know could have. Yeah, I mean, I as much as they wanted to. Yeah. What, what happened, Don? Uh, I was just saying, I'm surprised they didn't do it earlier, you know, since it didn't do as well as, like, the Wii and the DS, you know, yeah. the previous things. Yeah, that's, that's what I was getting at. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm just as surprised as you that it lasted this long for online, but I get it for the, the functionality as far as, like, the store and stuff like that, because people, there are people who retro game and they like to still buy, like, old games off the thing. Right. But as far as like online, as far as like playing online, how many people <laughs> really played online with those two systems? Oh yeah, right. <laughs> it's like dead on arrival for a lot of them. Yeah, it's it's a very very low percentage of people who cooperative play online. Nintendo 3DS. I mean, Wii U had what Smash Brothers and then what Mario Kart, I guess, but. Like, how often do you really play online with those? I don't even play online with Mario Kart on my Switch. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. the, the, the most that I get online with any Nintendo console is is Switch with the uh, with, uh, Smash Brothers every now and again. And that's like whenever a fucking solar eclipse comes. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. We're going to rise tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. It's, it's not very often that I, I personally play any online game. Right. Yeah, that would be a good metric to to measure like how much the traffic was online on the Wii versus like the Switch or like even the DS. I know the DS did of course way better than the Wii U. But... Yeah, with that, the 3DS kind of like didn't do it for me because I guess it's my brain or my fucking eyesight is horrible, but the 3D part of it was just hurting my eyes. So I didn't really oh care for that functionality and then they came out with the 2ds i can still play 3ds games but without the 3 and you know, of course i can keep the switch off and whatnot but again right. never really played with any online play or anything the only thing you really use online for was buy the game yeah the, is a lot of the wii u games on the switch now like did they port some of those games that were exclusively there's some on? some games reported but not not a lot of them, because okay. you know now nowadays the uh, the games are like remastered or redone or you know. Right. Yeah, because I was always wondered that if they could bring a lot of DS games or like the Wii U games onto the Switch, that'd be smarter yeah. to do. Okay. So uh, especially so, if they're closing down the stores. Yeah. So rest in peace to you know the Wii and the Wii U, whatever, and um, Nintendo 3DS. Guys, if you can subscribe and comment, you know, we would love to yeah. see how you guys feel about the whole shutdown for, uh, you know, the Nintendo 3DS. And, you know, there is people who are out there that feel some type of way or are kind of upset about it. But, you know, it, it was bound to happen because it's so old, it's way too old. Right. Yeah, and I, I definitely agree with what Don said about it earlier, that I feel like it just in general didn't get as much traction as it could have. Right. I mean, I had a Wii U, not a Wii U. I had a Wii. Never got yeah, to the I had Wii U because I skipped the I skipped the Wii U. I, got, I stopped at the Wii. Yeah, I got the. Lie. I had all the Nintendos, all the different Nintendo uh, DSs. I had all of them: the, the regular one, the light, the 3DS, the 2DS. I had all of them. But the yeah. Nintendo Wii, I only had the Wii, not the Wii U, because I didn't really care for it at that time. I had like Xbox, PlayStation, Xbox 360. The yeah, stuff. at that point, you're <laughs> like, why sense. even do it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a lot of the tech people had a lot of 
problem with the technical aspects of the Wii U, Wii U, how it controlled and everything. I think that's a lot of why it fell too. I I guess because they they wanted to be different, like always. Just like they got the Switch, that's different. Nobody else did that, and then now everybody's doing it. But like the the the, the Wii. Wii U was different because it had a screen attached to your controller. We had a screen attached to the controller with the, um, the Sega Dreamcast, but that was a part of the memory card. And when you play certain games, it'll show oh, the yeah. thing, like a little Tamagotchi almost. But it wasn't like a full right. screen how the Wii U had it. Yeah, it's like the PS1, the the second version where you had the, the screen on top of the PS1, that little screen. Yeah, that was a, uh, it was an attachment. It was a thing you just yeah. add that separately but um as far yeah. as the, like being on the controller itself that was like innovative mm-hmm. at that time and it was new and it was cool but then it sometimes it didn't function right sometimes you know, it got weird um yeah, it's, it's equivalent to the playstation portal how that felt with the playstation when they tried that yeah, they kind of took that concept or whatever but yeah, were, totally. the PlayStation Portal is one for more that remote play because they know some people can't, like we have families. So somebody would be on the TV and then you'd be like, damn, I really wish I could play my PlayStation right now. But you can with the Portal because it's like direct. It's, not, it's yeah. not like using your phone. It's supposed to be more clean, like a cleaner, crisper way to do it. Right. Which is still kind of stupid. They should have at least added some kind of like web browser or something. Yeah, make it more you know it's user friendly or whatever. Yeah, so let's uh let's move on to the next thing. Since uh, April Fools passed, let's talk about some of the best April Fools uh you know fake things that came out for the for gaming. I've seen I've seen something about like the the Pal World was gonna have um, a dating sim. <laughs> And it oh was like it, it was like Pal World more than just pals. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> and it said coming April first, twenty twenty five. But it, that was fake, obviously. <laughs> it was it's some funny shit. Real and quick, then, how many people do you think actually fell for that one and got excited for it? All the dweebs. <laughs> to like what? For sure. More than pals. Baldur's <laughs> Gate. All that better shit. The oh my animals god. And Oh, you we started on Baldur's Gate. That shit's wild. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to look because I didn't really care too much about the April Fool's jokes because I kind of knew what was fake and what wasn't. Yeah, uh, me too. It says here Razor was making like a Doc Ock chair. It was really weird. <laughs> that never happened. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah and then there's like uh, they were making it says for Mortality Channel is Among Us. Zombie Army VR brand of energy drink is what you need. Flesh is described as the feast in a bottle. <laughs> wow. It says cr- crammed full of all 666 vital nutrients. And it's supposed to be like a bloody drink or whatever. Oh my God. Of, uh, it's like the movies that, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen those blood, those Nikes with the blood inserted into the, the soul of the Nike. Yeah, there's some weird stuff in here. I'm trying to find out, like, what else Speaking of the VR, I'm seeing this I'm seeing this April Fool's of a, a Nintendo VR set that's, like, a tribute to the the virtual the virtual boy. But oh, yeah, 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 I did see that one. Yeah. <laughs> that's that pretty was, clever. That was super, They literally uh, have, like, a switch on, like, the, the VR set, and you can... <laughs> Like well, they kind of did that. They kind of did that with the Labo thing, and that would that felt oh. terribly. You like you like <laughs> literally just build a box and then just put the switch on your face, and then you can play like uh, Zelda VR. It's the stupidest. Oh, thing. what the hell? I didn't know yeah. about that. Yeah, it's not not good at all. They they tried their best <laughs> to do VR. Well, Virtual Boy failed, and now Labo failed. <laughs> Should I give you epilepsy? Seriously. Damn. So I got, uh, oh, I'm seeing uh, Pokemon is holding an epic Pokemon sleep tournament, <laughs> but that was a prank. Pokemon oh, posted that on Twitter. <laughs> uh, Titanfall was in 2014. Titanfall was supposed to get like a, a 
uh, Optimus Prime DLC. That never happened. Bro, imagine though. Yeah, I know. And then they had like the iPlay in 2013. It was supposed to be like an uh, Apple console type thing. That was fake. <laughs> wow. Oh, look yeah. at this. Uh, Just out here people's emotions. There is, there is one thing that was fake that it was fake but ended up coming true was in 2011 they were like doing it as a prank for a Harry Potter show but now today we're getting a Harry Potter show on HBO Max which is crazy. We are? Yeah, we are. You didn't oh, know that? Damn. No, I was fully out of the loop on that. <laughs> what? He said that really went right over the head. <laughs> what? Um, you didn't know Harry Potter me. was having a show? You it's know? based it's based off the books. Like it's literally gonna be coming from coming from the books. Like every oh, detail awesome. that the movies miss is gonna be in the show. That's awesome, actually. Yeah, so all the good shit we're gonna see in that. <laughs> no, that sounds exciting though. No, I'm I'm real excited for that. Yeah, me too. In 2008, the Zelda movie that was fake. You know, oh, it's even Cyberpunk. They put out a a prank too on April Fools. Cyberpunk's Twitter. It says they put out a Cyberpunk floppy edition, like the floppy disc. Yeah, but Who the but it's obviously that? Cool. now. <laughs> now, me personally, edition. I can't really say what would be the best because I don't. I'm not really big on April Fools. Like, I really don't care. For any of that oh, stuff. Yeah. And you can kind of already tell what's fake with stuff like this because yeah. it just doesn't make sense. But what would you guys consider the best that you've read so far? Hmm. I'd say, let me see. I'm seeing this uh, Sega one too, where they're trying to bring back, they supposedly brought back the, the Sega console, but it's, it's fake. It's kind of <laughs> like, it was kind of promoting it, like remember how PlayStation made like the mini PlayStation One. Yeah, it's kind of like like a tribute to that, but it's fake. It's I think that's clever, and it's like trying to bring back Sonic with the the cartridges and everything. Oh God! Uh, don't, <laughs> please, please, please don't bring back cart- cartridges. Uh, yeah, I'm like, I see. <laughs> I, I see one from uh, 2020 about Xbox. They uh they they were making a uh, Xbox Series XXL. Oh my god! <laughs> that was one of the April Fool jokes. Yeah, that was the April Fool jokes. Like, <laughs> like it's it's huge. Like it's massive. I think that would be the best one so far that I've seen. Because yeah. it, it's making yeah, fun of th- itself because the cards I, got bigger at some point. <laughs> yeah, I think that that might just take the cake. That one's actually kind of funny. Oh my god! The razor chair is pretty good too. Yeah, the oc- the the oc- uh, it's like Doc Ock one. Yeah, it says AI arms ready to do the binding. <laughs> yeah, and then they got the like I said earlier, the Optimus Prime for Titanfall. Now, I I be, I would believe that most people would believe that because it could look like a DLC, like you're playing as giant Optimus Prime and his chest opens and you come out of him. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, that that's would be more that, that, that's that believable. kind of sounds dope though. But yeah, then it would make people dope. sad after they'd be like, "April Fools, just kidding, we're not really making this." Yeah, that would like, like you motherfuckers. <laughs> It really wanted it. <laughs> oh man, uh, guys, if if you know of any April Fool's jokes, as far as like when it comes to gaming, just let us know. Uh, in the, subscribe in the comment. and comment and put right. it in the comments, and we'll read it, go over them, talk about it. Probably in the next episode, we you never know. Yeah, even hit us up on Twitter too. Like we're like literally I'll everywhere, play. literally everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. So let's move on. Let's talk about Xbox, like we said earlier. Um. Let's talk about the best generation of Xbox. What do you guys think that would have been? I mean, in my opinion, I, I definitely would say, like, it has to be, like, I don't know, like, it, it, it's a combination between the Xbox 360 was, and then the first X, and the, and the first Xbox. Like, nah, fuck that, man. I'll say the 360. Bro. The 360 bro, was fire. The 360 <laughs> not only had better graphics, but it kept you on your toes because it, was, it made you so emotional. Because the the red ring of death. Oh my god! <laughs> I was so bro. I was so afraid to get the red ring of death, and I got. I probably went through like three, three Xbox three sixties because two of them got the ring of death. I would have to say, like, yeah, definitely in three sixties, just because like the games itself, like it, it, like come on, like again, like the game, the games at that time were just like moving, right? Like we had Halo three. Um, 
Bro, it had, Halo 3 it has, Forge. Oh my Halo God. 3 Forge. Like, yo. Oh, that was telling, time right there. Right. Um, you know, that was yeah, like... Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. no, you was already talking. Go ahead. Um, so that's why I was just trying to get at, like, uh, you know, the games itself was definitely just moving. Um, it just had so much... It had a big catalog of games. Um, you know, it was exciting to even have an Xbox in general at that time. Because before, like... You know, Xbox always kind of like had like games that were kind of like real as in as as consumers. Um, but when the 360 kind of rolled around, it was like we still had the PS2 and 3 and then it was kind of like debatable who really wanted which console. But I think everybody was leaning towards Xbox at that time because they had more better stuff, uh, better games to play on that console. Um, I wouldn't even say essentially like the the graphics or anything. I think they were both kind of like the same PS. What is it? PS3 and Xbox 360, right? They were both the same thing. Um, was it the PS3 or was it the PS2? I think it was the PS3. The, I think it was the PS3. Be, yeah, because I think the PS2 went up against the first Xbox, if I'm not mistaken. That's right, yeah. Yeah, so I, I definitely do think around that time, uh, a lot of people were just like going towards the Xbox like field because, you know, co- correct. Like, I mean, we still had that on, on you know, PlayStation 2 and PlayStation, 3. PlayStation 3 was kind of strict on it. Though. You only could play a certain. You had to get the first models that came out back yeah. in 2007. Xbox, you could just do any Xbox game. Right. And. and the Xbox, you had the uh, the hard drive that came out, which which was a lot more accessible. Like you can access it a lot better than than you know having to. I think for the PS3, you had this like little compartment that you had to unscrew, then take it out, and then it was a, it was a lot more complicated than just popping open the the hard drive. Yeah, it was a pain in the ass. Yeah. And the thing is, like, even when you modded the Xbox, right? Like, because I've had one that they actually had to cut the hole on the side, and they actually had like a whole bunch of like lights and shit in there. So I have a modded version of an Xbox was even dope back then. Um, it's just like there was a, just a lot more that goes into that. So I, I personally just think like it was definitely king at that time as far as the you know the consoles. Um, 360 definitely hands down has to be the the greatest like category, you know. Yeah, out of all the Xbox stuff, yeah. 360. And, I, and I think fun. the 360 actually beat the PlayStation for the first time when that came out. Yeah, like, I, think as, they, like, I think it beat the. Probably yeah. it did, yeah. Yeah, like you still had to pay for. I think you still had to pay for um, Xbox Live, right? Like I think that's when. You did. That's when the first. That's when they first started to roll the the subscription stuff out. Um, unfortunately. Only on Xbox though, because PlayStation Three was, you know, still free, of course. Um, oh shit! I forgot PlayStation Three was free. It was free. It was free online. But they, that was one thing they, they was like, you know what? Play when they brought PS Four around, they had to they had switch it up. X, Xbox is making money, making more money off and, that. And they were like, all right, bet. then we gonna do online. We got to do it exactly. So you know, um, at that time again, like I think they were just. They were top dog just because, like, their games, though, because that was their prime time. Like, that was they were in their prime at that time. Halo Three, uh, all these gear, Gears of War, um, just a, just a, just a, just a design of the Xbox was just a cool looking, you know, cool looking thing, man. It was, it was, it was cool to have one. Um, the tray, you know, the the kind of like chrome kind of tray that pops out. Uh, the controller was definitely it was. It, to me, I think it was cool because it even had like the little, um, and like the little middle button of the X, but you could feel the X. Like it was just the material of the X. The 360 was pretty cool. Um, it just had with the controllers. Like if you do yeah, the light, player one, you it'll be on one side. If you're a player two, it'll right be over here, yeah, you know, stuff like that. And it just like the their chat system was better. Uh, I'm, I'm not trying to say like compare it to like PlayStation because we were just talking about like the best kind of like best Xbox. Best console ever, PS2. Yes. Correct. Correct. Sorry. It is. No, I agree with you. No, I'm, I'm no, no, I, not just you, the yeah. audience. I'm sure somebody going to say something. <laughs> They're going to be like, nah, I don't believe that. I'm telling you, man, PS2. That, that, was, that was life right there. But I had to, but you know, the Xbox definitely was, you know, definitely 
the 360 was probably the best in my opinion. And then comes the first Xbox because that shit, bro. I was, it was it was it was cha- it was game changer. It was, it was. Game changer, bro. The first Xbox, I'm just like first Halo. I wanted to come home after school and go play the shit. Fuck PlayStation was like right there. It was like over there. Yeah. And then I was playing Halo for a little bit, and then I'll jump to PlayStation, and then I'll jump back to Xbox. And about to jump back, I was like back and forth with those two. And then I got the 360, and then the 3 came out, and I was playing the 360 more, and probably because Halo 3. And I would play online with Halo 3 Forge, and we would just kill it. Man. That's where I spent my most time. It, 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 was, it was amazing to have an Xbox back then, man. It was, you know, it, when they presented it, you know, obviously back in 2001, it was, it was just something that was like, whoa, like, you know what I mean? Actually, another competitor... Uh, to the gaming industry, you know what I mean? Like everybody just thought kind of PlayStation was king because there was no other actual, you know, company that was making, I mean, besides Nintendo. Nintendo was around there, of course. I, you, But it's like they've been around so long in the 80s, you know what I mean? Like if we're talking about the next generation of consoles and gaming that, you know, nobody was touching PlayStation at the time. And then 2001 rolled around. We got it. We got an insight on Microsoft when they made this, you know, when they made this console. Um, but when they when they brought the 360 around back in 2007, man, it was it was game changer. For real. Yeah. Plus, it's like the first uh, U- United States based console. So, because you know Nintendo and PlayStation's are uh, from Japan, so that was like a good look for that economy oh, over for, here. Yeah. Yep. It's like the, yeah. the the Chevy or the <laughs> the American made right. stuff over here. Yeah, and then exactly. X- Xbox One rolled in in 2013. That was that was next gen right there. Right. How do you guys feel about that Xbox One? I didn't have an Xbox One until <laughs> until uh, the Xbox One S came through in sixteen two thousand sixteen, and then that's when I got the Xbox One because I got the One S, mm. and then I never got the Xbox One X. I never did. I never was. So I I got that one. Um, it was it was nice because we you know obviously with every single console we've always get you know after seven plus years we always get an increase on the graphics and you know it's it's a new operating system because we you know everything looks kind of newish. Um, you know they introduced the uh, what was it the multitasking kind of slide which was pretty decent when it came out with the with the what was it the Xbox One X. Mm-hmm. Um, that was pretty cool, man. I was able to watch Netflix while I was gaming. I mean, yeah, it was running slow, but it was like a, a like we didn't we couldn't do that before. Like we were just figuring out like how to multitask on consoles. Well, rage quitters loved it because they would quit the game and go home right off the side. They <laughs> right the thing and be like, real quick, duh, 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 done already. Back yeah, it was like I, I forgot what it was called specifically, but you like tapped one. Like I think it was like you though you double tap the the middle button or one of the buttons, and it kind of just switches between the the. the windows which was pretty good um so it was like turning into like a mini pc at that point like the xbox 360 was kind of just like a an online like kind of just a strict bare bone console like it was just like play it yeah i think for the xbox one they were trying to turn it into like a mini pc yeah like like, a a do-it-all type thing because they had like cable service and stuff that you can use with it it's correct yeah you got like all this live services and that's when um Fucking Netflix and shit was starting to be on there, and then streaming, you could do yep. all this stuff. Yeah. So I, I had the PS4 at that time, too. and the games at that time were, you know, Sunset Overdrive. Those these were like launch titles that came out with it. You know, like that was it was fun. Like, yeah, uh, what was it? Um, Killer Instinct. Uh, you know, a lot of these games were like, like the graphics were fucking phenomenal. Like, I mean, PS4 was great around that time too. But like Aaron always says, if he was here, um, you know, he would say like it was pretty weak when it first came out. Um, but the graphics wasn't weak. It was just kind of struggling to play some of the games at the time when it, when it first launched. And I remember that. Um, I remember after a while, my PlayStation was starting to float in the air a little bit. So yeah, it, it would overheat. It will overheat. It would it it would slow down the frame sometimes. It wasn't the game. It was actually just the you know the the, the console oh, itself sure. sometimes. Yeah. And poor optimization. Yeah, so it's like the controller was cool. I mean, that was something like uh, yeah, that was something new and exciting. Yeah, the Dual Shock Four that was pretty cool. But the Xbox One, act like they like they ain't could vouch for that. That was the greatest one of the like when they introduced that controller. 
it's still it's still people still use that for gaming on PCs all the time. Xbox One controllers. You know, even the 360 controllers. Like it's just, I, I did when I had my PC, I used the Xbox One controller. And it was still good, right? Like that's the like mm-hmm. best controller ever. So yeah. you know, like plus it has the benefit to be with you know cross with the PC because it's Microsoft, of course. So yeah. it's easy to adapt with the controller to that. What else? Like Rise of Rome. That's another one. Yeah, that, that was a launch title too. Yeah, that was a launch title. You know what I mean? So it, it I, I had it, and I, and I again, I had a good time when I got it. You know what I mean? It was, it was a, it was definitely an event, uh, an experience. Um, and then obviously after that, I almost got every single Xbox besides the first one. The first one you guys had, and I used to play it over at your house, but I got every other one, three sixty at one X, and you know, um. And then the the Series X is the one I got. So, in my opinion, I still think the 360 was probably the best. Um, yeah, in my obviously for the time, right? And that's because like the the longevity of it, obviously, in my opinion, because we've had I've had it for a long time. Like you know what I mean? It was from 2007 to about when did the when did the other one came out? Uh, the next one, One X, came out 2013, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, the, the the one the the one Xbox One came out in thirteen and the One X came out in uh, seventeen. Yeah, so the so, One X came out around the time the Switch came out. So we still it was a long time from two thousand seven to two thousand thirteen. We had the three sixty four. So I'm gonna still say like yeah, that was probably one of the one of the greatest moments of of of, of Xbox history, really. Sure. Even um, if it's a web reading <laughs> from uh, Gamer Insider. It's saying the 360 is like a lot of people's most, you know, favorite uh, generation of console they came out with. I mean, and then I can see why there's a lot of second, second, second. Yeah. Well, I think yeah. Uh, I think that one takes. Yeah. You guys agree? Yeah, 100. Yeah. percent You know, in my opinion. I can't I say much because I play PlayStation most of my life, and I never had an Xbox. I did play when my friends had it periodically, but I never owned any Xbox consoles. But I could see the impact it had at the time, especially yeah. when the console started. Bro, <laughs> I, 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 I'm like the poorest of the poor, not not literal. I'm just saying, like I'm <laughs> so poor that I tried everything in my power to get. Everything. How, how it was and everything like I had a Sega Genesis, I had a uh, Dreamcast, I had a, a what's the the fucking handheld one? Uh, there's a Sega handheld that I had. I forgot what it was called. Uh, the the Playboy. I mean the uh, the. No, nah, hold on. No, there, I forgot the, the Game Boy. Game. No, no, no. Yeah, not the game. I did have a game. I had all games. Oh, uh, the game, the game, game gear. gear. That's what it was. There it is. Okay. I had a game gear. I was told. You, you know what? I actually remember holding that when you yeah, had it. I had it. Yeah. And it, it got put to storage somewhere after some, one of us moved, and I never seen it again. Never seen it again. Like I literally so never seen it again. I was having so much fun with that game gear. That was like my fucking. Sold that. That was my handheld. I was having so much fun, and it disappeared. Like I, I kind of had almost every system or every version of the system, you know. Right. Like I at least have mm-hmm. an like Xbox thrown up. I at least had a PlayStation thrown up. I had Nintendo products thrown up. I had a, a Super Nintendo. I had a regular Nintendo. I had all of them. Um, never had an Atari. I'm not that old. But um, yeah, <laughs> I was about to say that's that's pushing more like the '70s kids. Yeah. So like from from, <laughs> from like NES. Up, I I had yeah pretty much at least had at some point. I would say the prime. I would say the prime of gaming at that time. I mean, we got to be on it. Started going up. Yeah, Atari was more like an introduction, and this is kind of what we're going towards. I mean, besides obviously like um uh, uh what is it classic uh machines that you have to go to like arcade machines and shit. Yeah, I mean, yeah. growing up, I like I did go to arcade. But it was. Wasn't like the eighties, seventies. It wasn't that far back. Like what we see in movies. <laughs> yeah, so I kind of like it, you know how the the Tron movie newer one how he walks <laughs> into the arcade room and then he finds something in the back. Right. That, that kind of arcade thing I've been through. Not like a fucking yeah. David Buster's. 
<laughs> yeah, I used to play an arcade in uh, the laundry mat. <laughs> That's like probably one of my first interactions with a game, playing Rage Monsters yeah. or whatever. Um. Yeah, so I I kind of want to um, say that if you guys have any comments on what Xbox you think, if you think we're wrong, tell us we're wrong, and how, tell us how you feel, you know what I mean? Because uh, Aaron just got in, too. Like to Aaron just got in, so we might as well ask him real quick. Well, uh, yeah, <laughs> so Aaron, what's what do, you, what do you think is the best generation of Xbox? See, Probably, see if you're on uh, par with us. So... That's a little hard, honestly. So I'm gonna say, so logic, logic dictates 360. Just you know, logic dictates that 360 would be the best generation of Xbox. Mm-hmm. But I think, as far as since I'm a classic gamer, as far as game preservation goes, as bad as, bad as Xbox One was out the gate, we all know the whole always online connect bullshit. Mm-hmm. They did do a lot for game preservation a little bit down the line on that with backwards compatibility and all that stuff and updating the xbox ones to like make sure it plays older discs from 360 and xbox um xbox og mm. i hate xbox naming convention um but <laughs> <laughs> yeah but uh so i mean logically it would be 360 because you know they were getting exclusives like even i don't think any of you all noticed but mass effect one was exclusive to the xbox 360 like i think for like the first year or two years something like that that's a big exclusive to get. Xbox you, you, was on their shit. You and the audience is gonna hate me for this, and I'm Uh-oh. just I'm gonna have to just take the hate. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys, but I oh. didn't really like Mass Effect. That's crazy. What? Yeah. Not big on Mass Effect. Not, not big on what was it because you're fucking aliens? Is that what it is? Okay, if that's the case, I understand. I mean it, it could be a part of it, but I just never really got <laughs> into it. I just it. never got really into it. Uh, I understandable. All right, but I mean, logical, like logically, it'd be the 360. But I feel like Xbox One did a lot for game preservation as a whole, just in general. Mm. Um, and I can't take that away from them because I, he, uh, what's his name? I forgot his name. He's in, it's Phil Phil Spencer. Phil Spencer. He did a lot to revitalize the brand of Xbox in the beginning of the Xbox of the Xbox One. I don't know if y'all remember Xbox One was terrible at launch. It was it really was mm. like they all these weird rules and regulations they had going on, DRM and all that stuff. So he did he did quite a lot to revitalize that brand. And while I know the whole thing is that on Twitter, infinite money, 10 years, there's still no good games. How does he do it? And all that stuff. He actually did quite a lot to revitalize the brand in the eyes of gamers and like casuals in general. So like I'm gonna say 360 would be the best generation of Xbox really. But like I can't knock Xbox one. Honestly, I can't say Series X would be the best generation of Xbox because, you know, everything is third party and everyone's talking shit about them and all, a whole bunch of other stuff. But 360 probably would be 360 probably would be the um, the main, the, the best generation of Xbox to me, in my opinion. I mean, that's when they was actually going after Japanese games. They were actually trying to get trying to secure exclusives. I think they were, they were selling Xbox 360 at a profit. Which is unheard of for consoles. I mean, let you let you Nintendo, your console's weak as hell, and you can sell it at profit. But they know at the time that they they were selling that in two thousand five and two thousand six, they were selling the Xbox 360 at a profit. That's hard to do. So I mean, I, I it'd be yeah, it'd be three hundred and sixty probably be the it would be the best the better one on that one. I just I just can't knock the Xbox One generation. You know, shitty at first, but you know, well, we're not we, we're not saying that it's not good. We're just saying like, what would be what, what, what was y'all? What was y'all? What was y'all opinion? What was y'all we all opinion? agreed on the 360. <laughs> yeah, we all agreed on the 360. Because it was like for that time was like a big fucking game changer. Dude. It did. And you know it was, you know it was good. Bro, for tell me you wasn't worried about the, the ring of death. I, I, bro, that shit make me sweat bullets. I, didn't I was like get a 360 to like 2010. Bro. <laughs> so by that time probably was all it was already I don't care how when you got a 360. If you had a fucking 360, you was at some point gonna get that ring. Yeah, you probably was. You Bro, probably I, two Xboxes that I had got the ring, and I had to get new ones. That's fucking ridiculous. The last, the, <laughs> the, the last 360 that I got was the Halo edition, that that bluish one. All right, but yeah, I guess for me, it'd be honestly, it'd be 360. I won't lie on that one. Definitely 360. 
again, guys, if you, please comment and subscribe. We, we talk about stuff like this all the time. Comment, let us know. We want to know what your top is for sure. Right. So let's uh, move on to uh, hearing about Jack Ryan finally reveals that PS5, PS2 actually sold the $160 million. So that was true. Uh, bro, the whole thing with that is you got Nintendo fanboys online saying, oh, he pulled a magical number out of his ass. He got that. My thing is, well, the, how, the, how the interview went is that he was talking about the 2000s, the 2000s, the PS2 era. And he said, I feel like he said, oh, the PS2 sold one, actually 160 million units. That's how much it actually sold. And everyone, mainly Nintendo dudes, started losing their mind. Like, of course, when the Switch is closed, now they want to update the numbers and all that stuff. But I feel like from a corporate perspective, wouldn't he know the actual numbers more than anybody else, technically? Like, why would he need to fabricate that? You yeah, know, why is it magical? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Why is it magical? Like, <laughs> like, like any, if anybody has the information, it's him. That's what I'm saying. If anybody right? has the information, it's him. So I'm like, what? I was, I was just confused, though. Like, why, like, why, why was he just focusing up on just, like, how much did the PS2 <laughs> I mean, because he was asked, he was, that he was asked, Oh, okay. About his, about his tenure during the 2000s, which is the PS2 era. You know, he <laughs> asked about that. And so I guess to massage his own ego and all that stuff, he was like, yeah, we actually sold 160 million. You know what I mean? And so that's and like, you know, and he's, it was his last day at Sony. So what, what, what you going to do at your last day? You're going to showcase the greatness that you did, the stuff you achieved at Sony. You know, that, that, now, that, I, that I have a question. Since it's PS2, right? Yeah. Did they just count the PS2 or did they count the PS2 Slim? They, I think they counted all of it. All of it. So anything slim, that has PS2 on it. On it. It most likely counted. Gotcha. I guess like... Because I'm not going to lie, I have both those motherfuckers. That's what I'm saying. Slim, like, you know, the, the PS2... The, the last PS2 game was like released in either 2013 and 2014, which is wild to me. But, uh... They <laughs> reviewed well into the PS4 era in that time. But, uh... Yeah, no. Yeah. Um, I just... Because it's kind of from uh, 2012. That's that's the, like the last margin of where he cut it from. Yeah, that's, like where he, that's where he cut it from. So I mean, like it's yeah. not it's not unheard of that they could have squeezed out five million more con- consoles. I'm just was confused about why Nintendo fanboys are so crazy and mad about that. Uh, I don't know. They, they have nothing else to be. No, I mean it's it's console about. tribalism. Essentially, and I know that words that those words sound so stupid next to each other. Council travel, what the hell are you talking about? But that <laughs> people uh, people like to defend their piece of plastic, that's just what they do. Um, the piece, <laughs> they, they do, they do. I'm sure Andrew got Andrew got a kick out of that one because he's a PC gamer. So he's probably like, Yeah, y'all like to, y'all got the losers, <laughs> by what he thinks. But uh, <laughs> he's like, I'm good, over, I'm good over here on my 20 yeah, losers, but uh, <laughs> but uh, no, I just like uh. People are saying he's lying, and I, I just don't get where that's coming from. You know, where, where's where's like, how we why would he lie about such a thing? Like, it's his last day. It doesn't like, like, do you just, <laughs> just want to see the receipts? Like, that's lie. what I'm saying. Like, he would he would know, right? And then not only that, it's not like he had to prove anything. Like, the PS5, per his own words, is doing good. Sony as a company, Sony maybe not as a company is not doing good, but mm. PlayStation, the PlayStation division in itself is doing good. So I'm like, why would he need to lie about that? And so I mean, I, this creation of the PS5, I was like skeptical at first. I was like, "This big ass fucking contraption!" Like, I don't need that shit right now. I waited. I obviously waited, but I, I do love this thing. This thing is great. It's fast. It's it turns on when you want it to. It works. turns on when you want it to. Yeah, like <laughs> yeah, no, no day I paid five hundred fucking dollars for the damn thing. It's not. It's not floating in the air. The fans aren't going off. You know, it's not smoking or anything. And I'm I'm like thankful that I didn't get a, a messed up one. I mean, no. you think that you think the PS5 will see PS2 levels of success? That say that again. Is that you think the PS5 will see PS2 levels of, of success? Um, I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't know about that, but you know, I just I just think it's just it, it's such a hard um, pedestal to kind of like stand up on, especially yeah, like it, it, it's just like I don't like not even the PS3 or 4 was managing close numbers like that. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, PS3 topped out at like 90 million, I think, and then PS4 topped out at like 120. So, how we're so, where are we now for the PS5? PS5 is 55 to 60 million. See, that's not high at all. It's high. It's just not 
it's not when like... I say when I say not high at all, I mean like compared to the PS2. Right? No, hell no. Hell no. That's no, what I'm yeah. saying because that was the whole that that was the whole thing we were talking about. Now they got they still have the PS5 Pro cut that's going to come out soon, and then you know I don't think it's going to make it even with the scalpers that that like took it off the market for the longest time. The 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 product is so expensive that they can't keep up with you know how many people want it and when people already got it they're not going to want to buy like three or four of them you know exactly. what i'm saying so they already they already, they already pretty much cap capped out like no no i how far do you think they're going to go if the, if, how think, long has the ps5 already been out you know what i'm saying yeah right how long has it been out uh, uh 2020 so it's about only been four years four, four, almost, not, not eight, almost five years oh no no well, November twentieth will be oh, the fourth, the fourth year. year, so so three years. Th- three three years some change. All right, I think they can make at least uh, I think a hundred million is easy thing for them to do. <laughs> yeah, I, don't know what that, I was to say I can see them passing the PS three because the that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I can see them doing that, but it's just like yeah. So my my other question is, how long did it take the PS two to get to? 100? I don't know. That's the thing. And that's why I brought, and, brought that up because that's why they probably think he's lying or something because like what did that... We, we, we heard us. The normal people we heard, oh, 159 What did that million. mean that every household had to buy like a few PS2? Yeah, you had to have like four in the house. <laughs> no, 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 not only that, yeah, exactly. Not only that, but like now, remember, PS2 also sold off of the fact that it was the cheapest DVD player to get at the time. And exactly. not only that, when you bought it, He's like, oh, you, you, just, you just happen to have a game console at the same time. It's like, okay, all right. What made it different now is that the PS5 is more expensive. Yeah. And uh, it was hard to get at first. Yeah. And now your yeah, TVs do all the streaming, so you don't need DVD. Right, exactly. So yes. the only real reason to get a PS5 is for its natural thing, which is playing games. Really? And, you know, that's true. That's true. And most, like, Big gamers, like huge, huge gamers, are on a PC. Think about it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, definitely. P- yeah, consoles are, are more of a casual thing now. Yeah. I will say that mm-hmm. more of a casual thing now. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't see. I don't see them. Like you said, like you said, I don't see them. Probably don't. I, I don't see them touching those numbers. I see like a hundred million at the most. But how long it took even... for the PS2 to get to that number? Is a good only, question. Only he would like only Again, Jack it, 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 would know. Only... It's only been three years, and we're already at what you said? Um, 55. 55 50. to 60. Yeah. 60 yeah, so let's say 60 is rounded off to 60. And like, how bro, many we, more people are, can really buy the PS5 if bro, we're already that high? Bro, we're still like, we're already five years, almost like you said, like four. We're already, <laughs> damn, we're already end of generation for PS5. Because yeah, they're already talking that. about 2026, the PS6. You're telling me Sony has a year to get close to that number? They don't it's not, it's it's not, hap- it's not happening. It's not happening. <laughs> it's, well, it's good to remember that at the time when the PS2 was released, its, it's only so- competition was the Dreamcast. And Sony had built a pretty it was a different time. Yeah. Yeah, it was a different time. And Sony built a pretty big brand with the PS1. The PS1 was humongous. So when people saw the PS2 was coming out and the games they saw before was Silent Hill 2, which was big as shit back in the day. Yeah. Metal Gear Solid 2. I remember Metal Gear Solid 2. Um I forgot what it's called. Sons of Liberty. Yeah, Sons of Liberty. You saw that coming out. You know what I mean? They saw and not only that, Final, the they saw, that game. exactly a trailer for Final I Fantasy. I actually got 10. it again on my uh my Steam Deck. <laughs> <laughs> I just got it again. It's all Final Fantasy X and all that stuff. Those were driving sales already. And when, once they saw that it was the cheapest DVD player, because believe it or not, for boys and girls who are listening to this who, are, who were born in the 2010s and all that stuff, DVD players were really expensive back in the early 2000s. Okay, it was. <laughs> Those shit was like $30, man. Like, <laughs> uh, so, like, you know, DVD, DVD, expenses, DVD players were really expensive in the early, uh, in the early 2000s. And there so, was a difference between regular, regular DVDs and Blu-ray. There was, yeah, exactly. There exactly. was, yes, there was. <laughs> it was, it was. <laughs> and so, once they saw that it was cheap to get, oh, this a DVD player. They bought DVD bought it because, like, you know, it's a DVD player. And right. like, hey, it does more than just DVDs. But they, they, then you see that, wait a minute, I could play Breath of Thought San Andreas on this joint. So, like, you know. And then when I'm done, I could just pop a movie in. Exactly. It was <laughs> Sony's first step, real, in my opinion, real first steps into being a multimedia 
player with his counts and shit like that. Yeah, and then you look once, on the- Xbox, once Xbox 360 came out, that's when they started to do like the streaming. Yeah, shit, exactly. Yeah. And then when you look on the back of the cards, you're like, holy shit, you can connect the internet cord? That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. You, had to, that's what I'm saying. you had to get that attachment. <laughs> You had, you had to get there, but the PS2 Slim came with a, a yeah, modem inside of it. Yeah, the PS2 Slim already came with it, but yeah, the, right. the regular PS2, you had to get that big-ass fucking box that you attached yeah. to the back. <laughs> I remember that. I had one of them bitches. <laughs> I had one of them bitches. Oh, was, exactly. So, I mean, I don't see uh, I don't see PS5 catching up to that number. No. no. Like, even with no. the Switch, even with that the Switch's it. numbers, the Switch's numbers are always, only so high. One, because of COVID. COVID helped that. We was all stuck in the house. And two, a lot of kids and a lot of people are buying second Switches. How many Switches have you bought, Dan? Let's be honest. I bought, so I bought I two got, already. Yeah, you I bought my, two. So I had my original Switch. <laughs> I resold that and bought the OLED Switch. I bought exactly. my son a Switch. I bought, exactly. I bought, I bought Emma a Switch. <laughs> next, next is your daughter, and right? Did, <laughs> next is your daughter, right? And, and next is Sienna. <laughs> And then I was originally going to buy for my brother's birthday for Robert. Nah, I was going to buy him a Switch. You're contributing to it. See, like, that's like, if we're counting you guys as a family, <laughs> Nintendo five, is the greatest. Five Switches per per family. <laughs> but it's because they're so easier to They're so easy. They to are. They're easy get. to get. Yes. It's not like I'm buying like 12 PS5s. I would never be able to afford that shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, exactly. I can't do that shit, but, but the, you know, you go on a marketplace and you get you get the switch for like a hundred dollars. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Exactly. That's really so like, it's, it's that, affordable. Right, the marketplace isn't contributing to Nintendo, but right. it's, it's you know, not, you're not. still getting switch, and that person b- before the marketplace had that switch from Nintendo. Right. So they already paid their price. Exactly. You know so like honestly I think I think like this. The Switch benefits by having also the Japanese audience where the PlayStation, they lost the place uh, the did. Japanese audience around the PS3 era. And they I think did. that's why the PS2 did so well, because that's like when it was in its prime as far as like they're having that that hold on that audience as Sony well. had the hold. And to be if you want to be honest, they technically kind of still do in a sense, because like not all third parties are bringing their games for the Switch because you can't handle it, obviously. But back in the PS2 days, they had the Japanese, the Japanese like audience by the balls, man. You talking about Kingdom of Hearts, Final Fantasy, Shin Megami Tensei, Persona. Like it had like a lot of Japanese games that people will love and will eat up and everything. They had the Sonic games, and like you know, they they had like a lot of games, Japanese games that Japanese audience really liked and everything. So that probably contributed to it as well. I mean, like, nowadays Sony like nowadays Sony goes all in on um. Sony goes all in on um you know Western audiences now you know now a lot of the games right. are very Western inspired you no know, God of War and stuff yeah like Last but, like, of Us back in the day in. yeah exactly like back in the day they were really they were really gung ho about the Japanese audience and everything like that and a lot and Final Fantasy helped that out a lot too because Final Fantasy was it's pretty it's pretty big now but at its, at its peak Final Fantasy was selling consoles when it came to Sony <laughs> at its peak so, damn like, a game yeah. damn yeah. no it was though like I mean uh, I know Danny know I know he he was there when Final Fantasy 10 came out and everybody was going crazy I know him because everybody I was probably, I probably beat that game like five times that's what I'm saying <laughs> <laughs> I was like everybody was going crazy when that came out what like come on now it was so, the greatest like, thing <laughs> so, like, that, that, so, that, I just like, said Waka stop yeah, Walker, yeah. Stop it. Hey, what what was the other girl's name? The the caster. She was like oh, Lulu fuck. or some shit like that. You yeah, Lulu, I think. Lulu or something. Lulu or something. Yeah. And then there was Yuna. Yuna and yeah, Lulu. Yeah, Yuna's or something like that. the 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 one with the staff. Yeah. So but like you know Lulu had the, the little bear and shit. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hate I her. She's worthless. But uh she wasn't. She wasn't that around. bad. I'm playing around. But uh <laughs> but no, like, like nowadays people aren't like especially nowadays, no one's buying two consoles nowadays. The old three consoles. They're probably yeah. buying a PS5 and the continent that they probably buy a Switch. Or they probably got a PC and the continent. There you go. Now I was about to say that's the greatest <laughs> combo right there. They got they got a PC, they're probably gonna buy a Switch. The continent that Steam Deck. Exactly, exactly. PS5. I mean, so like the markets are even more stretched out, I should say now. They're right. more stressed out. You know I, mean? I don't know what I don't know what Xbox is doing. Yeah, I don't know what Xbox is doing, <laughs> but you know the markets are even more stressed out now. I mean there's an Xbox one in this household, but it's just collecting dust. I got I got one sitting right here next to me too. 
<laughs> See, what, what, are you, what are you using that for? He's using it to, to hold up the other side of the chair. It's more it's more like it belongs in a museum. Like it's it like in museum. it's good to look at, but you can't play it. Like Dude, yeah, it's not exactly. a bad console. It's the game. there's <laughs> yeah, no, exactly no not, real games for it. Exactly. So I mean as we get as generations go on, wherever future gaming takes, where it's all streaming or whatever. We'll see a lot less. We'll see a lot less of those repeated numbers again. Switch is. I'm not gonna. Say, I know. I want to say the switch is truly an outlier, but like most people buy, like one person probably buys three switches a lot of times. They want that OLED. They want that mini, and they want that fucking regular switch. You know what I mean? That's how. It, that's how it is. And it's the same it's with, also so convenient. Too. Exactly, and the same happy thing happened with the DS and the DS, like. When you went to a Walmart, you was buying a DS out of nowhere. It was that damn cheap. I was, just, I was just talking about that I had every single DS that ever came out. Exactly. So that like there, there was that. No, I mean there was that. So I mean PS2 go to console. I won't see the numbers again though. <laughs> what were you yeah. saying, Don? Another thing that comes into play is uh the economy too, around like the early twenties, like the economy was way better than it was before two thousand seven when the, the economy crashed. So that plays a big part too. Of like the cells and everything, especially now, like it's even worse now. Like that, we're going through another crisis of the economy, so that probably has an effect on the PS5 cells yeah, as well. So fucking expensive, and like taxes on every. Oh, yeah. Dude, I hate it. Yeah, food, let alone with the taxes, it's crazy. Dude, we we just went food shopping like a couple of days ago and spent almost three hundred dollars. Oh, that that was <laughs> that that was kind of normal for me. <laughs> Dude, like no, but it's, well, then again, you I got, got two, two kids. kids. <laughs> yeah. We our kid isn't here yet, and we spent that much. That's yeah. that's the point that I'm trying to make. Oh, good luck! Right. It's only going to get worse. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, all right. So let's move on from that. Again, guys, comment, like, and subscribe, and let us know, please, please let us know. We yeah. we want to hear your feedback. Um, let's talk about Nick and Aaron's thoughts on comic mix. Uh, top comic X zone. All right, so. Yeah, so all right. So I didn't get too far because I'm gonna tell you right now, the hardest thing was probably setting up the controls. <laughs> <laughs> it really was because I was doing emulator, obviously on um, as like fusion emulator or whatever the case is, yeah, and yeah, just yeah. kind of setting up the controller. So I didn't get too far. Um, I and I don't think that you could save this fucking game. Because I did die a few times, and it takes you right back to the very beginning of the game. Um, it is very I like what I like about it is just like first off, it's like a comic book, and it's you know the storytelling in it is pretty decent. Like each time you 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 go through each tile in a comic oh, book, yeah, it's kind of like yeah, yeah it's nice. it's awesome. kind of, yeah, it's kind of like moving with the the story. Like you know, if he's fighting an enemy, uh, the 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 artist is gonna draw like another enemy for you to kind of yeah. fight, which is pretty decent. And now um, that you're fighting the enemy, and you pants the punch was real hard. The artist will fight, yeah. the, fight the like bam. The, it's like an actual comic book. It's like an actual comic. Book. I like and, that. I, and I like that. Like I, I never played a game like that before. Like I really liked. I like that feature. Can, can but, I can I say something real quick? Yeah, go ahead. I'm I'm just outing myself. <laughs> this is gonna be so dumb. I literally thought I'd never seen this game before in my life. And I thought you guys were talking about like a convention thing. Wow. <laughs> that's what I said. That's, that's why I said Comic X Zone. I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> are you, are you, that would have that been. God, it's a, for the audience, Comics Zone. It's comics with an X. It's a Sega Genesis game. Yeah. Um, it's a retro re- Yeah, I'm it's a, one of the retro re- one. This is a retro re- mm-hmm. rewind. I'm a dumbass. Honest with you. <laughs> no, I'm a dumbass. No, hold on, hold on, real quick, because it's not just you. I thought the exact same thing you did. God I, damn, you I assholes! Was so I was so lost. I would have started with with retro rewind, bro. I'm a dumbass. Let's leave it he at that. Be, Continue talking. Said, I could have said like, "Yeah, we're this is what we're doing now," and I would have like, "All right, cool." Now I'm following, but I thought it was they was going to like a comic convention. It was it was just me being me. I, That's I, hilarious. I, I'm re- I'm retarded sometimes. So. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, uh, but uh, 
that you know, is a cool, cool concept, though. That the whole it, it, exactly, it, it is very cool. I like the combat. Um, obviously, it's kind of like a button smash type thing because if you mm-hmm. play like Streets of Rage, it kind of gives like kind of the same feel where yeah. you get the uppercut. I like his kicks. Um, he gets to check his like kind of like per, like his pocket or something for like his inventory, which is pretty cool. Um, I like when he goes over to each tile. He literally swings across each tile. Yeah, yeah, pretty decent. Crazy. Like you know what I mean. Like you, you, you know when they. I, I was confused too when they were like because you got to read the description. It says, "Oh well, you got to go through a hidden path." I'm like, "Where's the hidden path?" And it's a manhole cover that you got to like literally duck and then kind of kick it to open, like to mm-hmm. get open the man cover, and then you got to actually like go down the man manhole cover. Um, I'm right now, it looks pretty dope. It, it, it's is. Pretty, it is. It is. <laughs> it is. I got to get farther in it um, because I'm so, almost. I'm almost done Eternal Darkness, and once I do that, I'm definitely gonna finish this one next. Well, the, the good thing is, I think uh, I had I, last time I beat it. I was playing it recently, but the last time I beat it was I had um, on Sony Mega Collection for the GameCube. That's last mm-hmm. time I beat it. I think it's only like four or five levels, something like that. The last level was ridiculously difficult. Um, it's hard. It gets hard. Yeah, it's hard. It gets hard. And the that, and spoilers alert from out here. Spoilers alert. Spoiler, spoiler. So stop here if you don't want to hear anything. But um, there is two endings to the game. So uh, you know, <laughs> by a little bit of replay value there. There's two endings. I won't tell you. I won't tell you how to get the good ending, but it's it's pretty apparent at the last boss how to get the the good ending. You just gotta be pretty fast with it. And, and it does. It definitely looks like it does have like replay value too, because like. There's just, paths. yeah, there's different paths, right? And it, and I noticed that too. Like when you go down to each tile, I'm like, oh shit, I can't go back up there or it like backtrack. Like you select this because it gives you an option whether you want to go up or down or side to side, like whichever, which, whichever way you choose, that's the path you're going to, you're going to keep going yeah, down. Exactly. You know, so that, that's why I knew like it was going to be like, all right, um, this is definitely going to be like, uh, like if you beat it once, you're going to play it again and see like you're going to get a different result at the exactly. end. Exactly. And like um, um I, I just I just like the way that I just like the way that like um for for the time just to see this type of this type of graphical style was just such a turn on. For me. It, like, it looks really dope. Like I I, nev- I never seen like because we have always we've always seen like kind of like you know space arcades streets because you got yeah. streets of rage like during that time we were just all, all over the place but. I've never seen a game within a comic book like that. Like that's exactly that's that's creative. Like that's what I'm <laughs> saying. Like yeah. it's creative, man. And then each time that you know you're going into the platforms, it, the guy, the whoever is the, the you know the illustrator, he draws things in uh, your path and shit. Like it's, is, the illustrator, the guy who's drawing is the fucking main villain. He's the one oh drawing this shit. God. And, uh, <laughs> he he away at everything. I, know, I forgot. I forgot how the story goes. I was, it was crazy. I was playing it yesterday. But I think the story goes that one of his creations comes out the comic book to like to kill him or something. I don't know why he's doing that, but he drags him in there, and now he's like trying to kill him through the comics. Like now, like he's like, oh, now I'm gonna draw things to kill you in the comic book and everything. Like I thought, it, I thought it took some inspiration from like Vita. Well, not obviously. This would have Vita of a Joe would have took inspiration from this. Like, yeah, exactly. Because I thought it was like a, I thought it was like a film at first when I first got in there. I was like, <laughs> I was like, is this like a movie or something right, like that? Right, like, exactly, exactly. Um, but it, like as I went through the, like it was going through the comic, I was like, oh shit, it's like a comic book. So that's pretty dope. Like. Um, and I like how, like, sometimes when you're just standing there, he kind of just, like, smells his, he takes off his shoe, he smells it and shit, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he, he, he interacts, like, he actually, you know, he's an actual character, like, exactly. sometimes you just, you just kind of play these games and they just kind of, like, go up and down and just don't really do anything. But, like, this was during an era where, like, Sega was really determined to beat Nintendo at their own game, so they were really, like, they were really, like, throwing, um... They're, they were throwing the, like, the heavy hitters at the at their console and everything. They, I think, this was developed by Sega, but by a branch off of Sega thing called the Sega Sega Institute or something like that. Sega Institute or something like that. Mm. And so they made like a whole um, a whole development extra development studio with like with the intention of just making hard hitting games that just will challenge Nintendo and just mm. throw the heaviest hitters at, at the Super Nintendo and everything. And it helped too because like. This is curated. Like I, I'd say honestly, I know people want to stay Sega for like, oh, Sega's curated for Sonic or stuff like that. No, they're curated for making Sonic the Hedgehog franchise and all that other stuff. But I feel as though it's their franchises outside of Sonic, such as this, which they should get the most praise for. When I see when I see Sega, 
I see games like Comic Zone, Rise Star, Jet Set mm-hmm. Radio. I see mm-hmm. like that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It, it, even um, even like Skies of Arcadia. Sound like like that's what they're known for. But I see them for all the other stuff that like that made them a rival to Nintendo back in the day. And this is one of those games because it's so fucking curated. Like it's. A, I'm not even sure if Nintendo themselves can make a game like this. That's nah. Like, uh, that's what I'm I, saying. I, 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 we got Paperboy. We got, you know, obviously a lot of their, like, classics, like, they had. But, like, it wasn't not, nothing like this. And when you play a lot of the Sega games that are on Sega Genesis, like, they just they just look more creative. They're more fluent. Um, you know, it just feels a lot more, like, at, like, I'm not saying, like, the games aren't as good, like, as vibrant, I guess you would say on Nintendo, but I'm saying like we had Streets of Rage, we had you know exactly. like we had some of the craziest Sega games on there that that really that really goes deep into like creative shit, like characters, uh, levels, you know, the difficulty. You know what I mean? Like that's what I mean. Like we don't we didn't really get that too much on Nintendo. And like, that, the thing is though, when you're fighting an uphill battle, man, this is like a time when Nintendo had almost a monopoly on the industry. When you're fighting an uphill battle like that, you got to bring your A game. I feel like Sega, oh, Sega yeah. they were bringing their A game with that, which is like, just, just like, like, okay, I see what you guys are going with this. So Sega like, you know. definitely okay. had a moment. They, 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 they had like they a moment, like where a time period where they had like a box of games and they just let them all out. Yes, exactly. I, I then, know, another moment with the Dreamcast too, low key. Dreamcast yeah, another moment. So, some of them moved over to Dreamcast. There was some fun Dreamcast games. But, yeah, because uh, it was owned by a Sega, right? Uh, Dreamcast? Huh? Yeah. It was owned by Sega. Sega, yeah, 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 Sega, so it was Sega Dreamcast. But um, <laughs> that was basically their, their attempt at next generation. Because um, it was like 3D stuff mostly. Oh, yeah, and then, yes. uh, but <laughs> I'm, I'm like watching the, the clip and stuff, and, and I like the animation of him jumping to the next scene and stuff like that. That's right. That's what I want to I like, yeah, I like, I like, I like yeah. how you can use the mouse to rip, tear pages and like find <laughs> items and stuff. That's yeah. pretty dope. Like, and then, like, you kill an enemy, and then the the, the artist draws another enemy right back. In the I game. don't understand why we didn't get uh, like a remaster or something. I of don't that know. Game. Hey, like, yeah. was, uh, yo, bro, remember, remember when they said Sega at the um at the Game Awards or something like that? They said they was remaking a bunch of games. I'm hoping this, this is maybe one, one of them. them. I hope. Now I'm gonna say that I'm I have never played this or heard of it, but I'm gonna say that this is an underrated game that should have got. The, more the, promote the, yeah like yeah. the praise that it deserves because it what i'm watching right now it looks very fun and i would would have definitely played it in its time i right. can't believe what? i didn't hear about this that's why i said i didn't i didn't, <laughs> I didn't know about how it how did i miss this game i didn't know about it until aaron brought it up that's how i didn't know about it it. Easy, it was always easy for me to miss because when i first played it, it was on sega on the, on the sonic media collection for the gamecube but the thing is though you had to like unlock it in some weird, stupid way. They had you unlock the game in some weird ways on the Sega, on the Sega collection. So I stayed up all night, turning Sonic One on and off, turning Sonic Two on and off, for starting the GameCube, trying to find ways to unlock it. And I finally got it. And of course, at the time, it beat my ass because I was a kid. I know that I know how to properly play it the right way. But I stayed yeah. up all night trying to beat the game, and I did beat it eventually. That's fucking great, yeah. bro. And. And I think to answer your question, Aaron, I think they mm-hmm. did announce that uh, uh, Jet Set Radio and Crazy Taxi are coming back. Okay. Like a, okay. Okay. So they bring they're rebooting those. I, yeah, I think know. those were the two that were confirmed. Okay. All right. They need to bring this back, though. That's what yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. They need to bring this back, though. Oh, yeah. It almost would have. It almost would have felt like. It almost would have felt like Aaron. You would have been proud of me with uh, Castlevania because now I'm on the wolf, like the the, the yeah. owl level. Yeah. So you're in the the woods. Yeah, now I'm in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> they start yeah. start swooping on. The, okay. Yeah, I tell you right now, going up on that second level, man, it was like so. <laughs> you go all the way to the top. You get you get you you know you get that guy that jumps on the walls. That's pretty uh-huh. good. You know the the shape shift or whatever. The yeah, Grant. Uh huh. Uh huh. And you go. Then you gotta come all the way back oh, down. Man. Oh my god, man, that was the worst. And then you know the jellyfish, the jellyfish, uh, the fucking Medusa, uh, like yo, it. God, man. It just keeps that's getting worse. That's not even the hardest level. Now. I know, man. Like it just keeps getting worse. Like, but I was like, Aaron would have been proud of me though. At least I finished. <laughs> I've killed two bosses already. So uh, you, you know what I mean. You fight the guy with the uh, the the coffins. <laughs> Uh, he didn't get that far. No, yet. I didn't get that far. I hate that yeah. part, Danny. <laughs> hate that part. Bro, is it's basic. What it basically is is like a uh, like a 
like an entity that goes into a coffin and in the coffin is a, is a different enemy. I think it's like a skeleton guy first. Or yeah, mummy. it's a skeleton guy, then the mummies, and then like the and then big like ass the dragon, ogre. Dragon ogre thing that comes yeah, after yeah, you. yeah, yeah, and all on one health bar. All on one health bar. It's crazy. I would rather I would rather be Comic Zone than that. <laughs> I, would, I would rather put my feet into a, a vial of acid. Vial of acid. I can't do that. Ah, ah, ah. No, nah, but I'm gonna beat it just like what we did with Dread. I told him I was like, I'm you know I'm determined, man. I I beat it. <laughs> I would I would say too that um son the closest game that I see that Sega made uh, later or after with, on the Wii was uh, Mad World. That looks kind of similar to... Yes, Comics that Mad World does look very similar. That's crazy. All right, yeah, I forgot yeah. about Mad World. And that's, that's done by uh, Sega, too. I didn't even know yeah, that. Sega that and Platinum Games Sega. made that. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's kind of like... It's still possible they could come back <laughs> with something like that. I don't know. Yeah, so... um, Did... uh. What do, you, what do you guys rate this game? What do I rate it? I'm yeah. going to say... Since you, since you, this is your time playing it, what do you rate this game? I could rate it about a seven. Yeah. It's, 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 seven? All it's, the praise you gave it, you gave it a seven? I gave it a seven. Because it's still, because it's still like, I because I haven't unlocked like the full potential of it. I still didn't even get far enough. Like, it, 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 you know what I mean? Like, so, and I'm still like kind of like in the beginning half because when I played it, I was like, all right, I just came off of Castlevania vibe. And so when I jumped yeah. off of that vibe and then come into this, I'm like, I died, go right back to the beginning. I'm like, oh my God, man. Damn, yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. It uh, means we want to play it. For me, uh, for me, comments on. Uh-oh. For me, um, I would give it a eight out of ten. Eight out of ten. That's what I said. Like eight a seven, eight. I, I a seven it. eight. I'll let y'all. I'll let y'all keep it there then. <laughs> like seven to eight is like well deserved. Like right, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, um, guys, we're gonna have so much more retro rewinds for you. Some classic games that, like, whenever we get our hands on it, we'll play and we'll and we play. stream it. We we stream we'll, it. We'll stream so. it on Twitch, anywhere, YouTube. You know, we're everywhere. Basically. Um. But we'll keep up with the retro rewinds. Give you some classic games. Yeah, they, some they nostalgia there. They definitely love the the Castlevania one when we did that. So we they want to see yeah. more of that. Yeah, so we, we'll we'll get more into that. They got I got supplies for y'all then the, the next next week. Yeah, I was gonna, gonna say next week. I, we I, we have we all have some ideas on some retro rewind games that yeah. we should try, try out. Some some really you know gold that we we got. <laughs> all right, so, yeah. Uh, does anybody else have anything to say before we uh, end this episode today? Nope. Nah, we're no. pretty good. All right. Well, uh, guys, please comment, like, and subscribe. Uh, we like your feedback. Peace. Peace.